Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody! Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to the new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. Um, we got a lot going on. The weather outside's a little bit windy. Probably blowing 30 knots out there. But uh, that ain't going to stop us from getting on some outboards here. We've got water pumps, impellers, and things to change. We've got a little 15 Johnson that's leaking water somewhere. We've got my own little Tahatsu 18 that needs an impeller. Um, we've got a Yamaha that needs some cables for the throttle and a kill switch. On and on and on. So, looks like we got uh, a lot to get to. So, I say Let's go inside outboards and get these things taken care of. Let's go. So this is the one fifteen Yama four stroke. Clean. The owner says, I think he says it's not. Pumping water. I wanted to show you this. This is typical of these bear guides and uh, what they do. Um, I put this in the tank, of course. Now, what this thing supposedly has wrong with it is it's not peeing water or cooling. So he thinks it needs a water pump. Put it in the tank and couldn't get it to spin over. And I... You know, I check the safety interlock on the recoil start to make sure that uh, it was disengaging properly so I could pull start it, but it wouldn't budge, so I knew what it was, um, which is very typical of these guys. Um, it was hydrolock from oil from being laid on its side and everything. But I got my half Milwaukee on it, and let me, here's the cylinders, I took out the plugs. You see all the oil flying out of that bottom cylinder. And of course now I get to sit here and pull on this thing and pull on this thing and pull on this thing to uh, finally get it to fire. Here's the bottom plug. You can just see it's just completely drenched in oil. So I'll spray clean them off too with the intake cleaner. I'm just going to let that sit there for a minute and spin it over some more. And of course, while I'm doing that, I have the man overboard 
switch disconnected because you don't want no spark in this situation. If you're spraying intake cleaner and different solvents to clean this mess up, you don't want no spark. If you turn it over like that and you don't have the spark uh, shut off, you'll have a flaming 15. So um, I'll clean it up some more and we can see if we can get it to fire finally. I'll be Well, it's pretty much already filled up my outboard tank with oil. So at this point, it don't really matter, but watch right there. That's what goes to the carburetor. That is the fill line for the carburetor. Well, I got it pumping mostly clear gas out now, so we'll see. If I can get it going. Well, Guess I'll do that. Yeah. I know what I can do. It's still got a lot of oil in there. But mostly gas is good. It's probably the carb. We have to take it off. Let me try just draining it. First, <sighs> see if it's full of oil. Can't get past the float. Oh, yeah, look at air coming out there. See that? See that coming out of that car? Solid motor oil. That's what you get when you lay them on their side and don't care. Yummy. Full of motor oil.
I don't know why I bother with this. It, I mean, if you can see in my tank, it's already topped off. Oh, great. fluid I uh, put some spacers right here and here to make up for the air silencer and uh, that way I can just let it go and I'll be back okay I'm gonna put the air silencer and all back on but I just th thought I would show you there's the spacers I use because you can see the bolts that hold the carb and the air silencer are, are one bolt so you got to make up for that thickness in order to shoot starting fluid, intake cleaner, whatever you're going to use to try and get one of these things um, to finally fire after it's been hydro locked with oil. So this is wider than it needs to be, but there's still enough threads here. But I keep a lot of these on hand from different things because you're going to need to make up that distance. Um, yeah. So, we'll put the air silencer and different things back on. I'll be back. Okay, on these uh, car bolts, 
slap bar air silencer bolts. That one way up in the back back there, if you get you a quarter inch extension, a longer one like this, you can snake it in from the front. And most of the time, get on that puppy. There we go. Now I've got to find a hole back here. We're not lined up. Where are we? Let me loosen this a little bit. There. Then I'll find it. Yeah, let's see if we can find it. Let me get a little bit longer extension. I think it would work better. Even longer! Would probably make it a little better. Need a real long one. Snake it through. Can I, can I, can I? Yes. There. Well, what is going on? Oh, I know what it is. I'm not lined up. I'm not lined up with the owl! You gotta be lined up. Or else it came around to the back side of the cob. Let's try it again. Try it again. And again and again. Alright, let me slide in here. You know. And it did it again. You quit being difficult. See if I can push it in there with a screwdriver. Is that right? No. Things in there all kitty one. Kitty one. You got to get through both holes. Or both pieces of plastic, should I say. What? You don't like plastic? Well, better get used to it. Because there's lots of it. Let me see. Okay, push the bolt in nice and slow. If I do that. Oh, or did I? Hmm. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Okay, let me try something a little different here. You see this bolt wants to go in at an angle and I've got to get it to where it goes through and stabs into the plastico there and there and then you got to make sure that gasket don't go kitty womping on you so it goes through about two gaskets, a couple plastico. Um, spacers. But uh, you take your time. There. You just take your time. And you finally get it. Don't forget your little hose here. everything that's supposed to be hooked up on it I believe I put this cover back on um.
Okay. Now, if you look and you're wondering why I've got my fuel hose run to the fuel filter, which bolts right here. Okay, right there. Because I did not have this goofy connector they have here. I looked through mine and I don't have that one. Well, I went up uh, to our only marine store and they didn't have one. So that's why I've got it hooked this way. Hopefully he's got the hose. Also, this safety interlock cable, I will discuss it with him, what he wants to do. But if, if this throttle has even the least little bit of throttle on, it'll engage this dog. I've got it wired so it can be started that way. But I will put it back the way it's supposed to be. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and see if this thing will... I wanted it to burn out as much of that oil as we could. My, my screwdriver went in the, in the tank. I, I gotta get out of the tank. Let's play, find the screwdriver. Oh, I have a screwdriver and a piece of wire. Okay. I think it needs just a little more. What do you think? Rustling that there outboard, I feel like some kind of oil bearing. <laughs> okay, a couple other things I want to point out. See all this oil, all this crude looking oil on top floating on the surface of my tank? You see how dirty the sides are and everything now? Okay, now let's look at his, his outboard. You see that? You see all the oil all over this outboard? What is that from? Do I keep my tank that dirty? No. What's That's from this engine being laid on the wrong side, being laid down on its side incorrectly, and then the cylinders filled full of oil, the fuel pump, the hose to the fuel pump, the holes from the fuel pump to the carburetor, the carburetor, all that. And when I had to pull it, I don't know, 40, 80 times to finally get it to pop after using two cans of intake cleaner and everything to clean most of it out, this is what ends up in my tank. And I, I really rather have it there than in my yard because here I can take sorbents and get a lot of it up but it just coats the whole everything with thick yucky oil that's why I can't stand when these guys they they still still this is a 2011 they still haven't figured out that this is not their grandpa's Evinrude or Johnson this is a small car motor. This is a four cycle engine. You wouldn't lay your car on its side. Man, what a mess. And, and I see this, I hate to rant, but I just see so much of it and it's so preventable. Round one of the sorbents get all the oil out of my tank. Yep, yeah, boy. Well, there we go. Um, 
I had no idea. <laughs> um, this video was supposed to be about water pump impeller changing and so forth. But it took a detour. Um, I would like to apologize about my rant, but uh, this caught me off guard. I was putting this thing uh, in here to get uh, the lower unit dropped, uh, impeller, water pump, whatever, changed, and lo and behold, it wouldn't pull over. And the minute that happened, I knew. And um, the severity of these things getting oil all up in the cylinders and hydro like that and everything, it depends, I think, um, largely on whether they were just kind of laid on their side, tilted maybe a little too far, or completely maybe even inverted upside down. I have seen that before. Um, I don't know if you saw the video, but I had it. It was a Jet 30 Mercury. This thing had been stood on its head full of oil, and it was brutal to finally get to, to pop. But on this one, um, like all of them, um, you've got to get all that oil out of the fuel system, and that takes a lot of this. You know, I can spin it over with the Milwaukee and get it out of the cylinders, but as far as the fuel pump, the hose lines, the, you know, all the fuel lines, uh, the fuel pump, the carburetor, you're mostly just better off. Um, had I known this one had been hydrolocked, which I did not, um, I would have went about this a little bit different. What I normally do when I know they're hydrolocked and, and full of oil and everything is I pick a particular pretty day and I actually lay a, a tarp thing I have out here and I put sorbets down and everything and I just get to drain and things. But this one, it was cold outside, it was windy and blowing, and I'd already had it in here, and yeah, anyway. Sorry about my rot, but uh, we finally got her to pop and come to life and uh, burn up all that oil and everything out through the system. So, maybe in the next video we'll get to some lower units, water pump impellers, and so forth, but uh, it's getting a little late, and as always, I would like to thank you for watching One More Hack from Kodiak. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.